What's up everybody, Jason for Vasa Productions. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take pictures, place them inside of shapes, and then move those pictures and shapes together inside DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Coming up. All right, so let's start this off. We're in the Edit tab here in DaVinci Resolve. We'll come over to the Effects area, and then just grab your Fusion Composition here, drag that into the Timeline by default. This is gonna be five seconds long. For this particular video, we're gonna keep this right at five seconds. Now let's click on the Fusion tab down below, take the media out, drag that over to the right to create some space here, take a background first and bring that into the workspace. There are a couple ways you could do this. We're going to use the new shape tools in Resolve to accomplish this effect. Take the output of the background, bring that into the media out real quick. Now take this background right here and then bring its alpha down to zero so we can see through there. Come up to tools, left click on that, and we've got the shape tools, just left click on shape right here. Let's just start with a very simple shape, right? So let's just start with the ellipse tool right here. Take that, drag it into the workspace, and then with ellipse highlighted, just come up here to shape render, left click on that, take the shape render output here, drag that into the background right here, and then we immediately have a white circle on the screen, right? Let's take that though, and let's change the color of the circle right away. So come up to lips, left click on that, come up to style here, click on the white, and then we've got colors right here. Let's come over here and make this black, left click on that, hit okay real quick, and then let's make this ellipse a little bit smaller. So come up to ellipse, bring that up a little bit, and then left click here on the shape transform to add that below the ellipse so we can change the size of the ellipse really easily here. Come up to the X size, double left click on this, just type in 0 0.70, hit enter. Do the same thing on the Y size, hit return or enter, okay? And then that makes that circle a little bit smaller. I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna move this over to this part of the screen for now. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to work on adding other components to this real quick. So what I need to do is get a picture into this so we can work with some pictures. Come up to the media pool here real quick. Under pictures, I've got a couple different pictures right here. We're just gonna take the picture of Simon Cowell, drag that into the workspace, and then take that output of his picture into the S render, and that will create a merge right here. So now we have a picture of Simon over the top of our circle, but we need to work within this and maneuver this around a little bit. So we're gonna take the media right here, come up to transform right here, left click on that. That way we can change the size of his picture. Come up here to size, bring that down and decrease the size quite a bit. And then let's just take this and bring this over the top of the circle here. I might wanna make this a little smaller so it fits in there just a little bit better, right? And then the next thing I need to do is come up to the picture assignment, which is right here. Just right click on that real quick and rename it. Just name this one Simon, right? So we know who it is. And then come up here to the ellipse mask right here and left click on the ellipse mask and just take the edge of it and left click and drag to make it a little bit bigger and then position it over his face like this and maybe extend it just a little bit bigger here, right? So we can fit more of his face into that position. And I think we have it lined up pretty well right here as far as his face positioning. The next thing that I need to do is take the mask using the transform under his picture, right? Bring it down. And then I can just drag these corners to make this picture bigger if I want or to make it smaller. I think we're gonna keep it about this size right here. And I'm gonna come back to the ellipse itself and make that a little smaller. I'm gonna come back to the shape transform right here for the ellipse, right? And just make this, let's just say 0.60, a little smaller and 0.60, hit return on a Mac. And then just take the Simon picture with the transform and place it inside there a little bit more. So if I wanna add a drop shadow to this ellipse to make it a little more interesting, all I have to do is come over here to the S render transform and ellipse, left click and drag over those, bring those up a little bit, Hit shift plus space bar, type in drop, that is drop shadow, hold down shift and left click on drop shadow and drag that right over this line below the shape render until it turns blue and then we've got a drop shadow right there. Now, we can easily see that, right? So that's great. I can take that drop shadow and just move it a little bit in the drop distance and change that so it's a little tighter to the circle, but I've got my first image here with my shape. Now to maneuver those two things together, what you need to do is come over here and left click and drag these, bring them up a little bit. And then below this merge right here, just take a transform and left click and drag that right there, okay? 
And now that transform is gonna allow me to move this around the screen very quickly and very easily, just like that. To work on the next one, all that I have to do here is take these, left click and drag them. And I'm just gonna bring them over a little bit like this. Let go. Take these here, these nodes, bring those over a little bit as well. And then all that I have to do is start a new sequence just like this. So I just come over here to merge, bring that in right here. Okay, we've got the merge. Come up to the effects library again, come down to shape. We got the, this time let's use the rectangle, right? So we're gonna use the rectangle. Left click on shape render with rectangle selected. Take the shape render, bring that right into the merge right there. Take this rectangle, bring it above, just position it a little bit. And then below the rectangle, we want the shape transform again. And we can take the X and Y size and make it a lot smaller. Double left click on the X size first, type in 0.60. Y size now and 0.60. Hit return on a Mac or enter on a Windows machine. Bring that over just a little bit right there. And then what I wanna do is place another picture inside of there, right? If I wanna add a drop shadow, we do exactly what we did before. So after the render, we need a drop shadow. So shift plus space bar, type in drop again, take the drop shadow, hold down shift, bring that right here. And now I've got a drop shadow over there. We can take the drop distance and just change that a little bit, bring it to the left. And then now we wanna add our pictures back in. Left click and drag these three nodes above the drop shadow and then take all of them and just bring them over to your right a little bit. All I have to do now, right, is add the picture in if I wanna add the picture in. So let's come up here to media pool and we're gonna use the rock for this one. Take him, bring him into the workspace, take his output, drag that into the drop shadow. That'll create a merge. Bring your merge right over here like this again. Bring him up, right click on him, change his name. I'm gonna name that rock, okay, simple. And then just below that, we wanna transform. So with rock highlighted or selected, left click on transform right there, perfect, okay. And then above the rock, again, we're gonna use the circle mask. Come up here to the ellipse. You can use any mask that you want. I'm just gonna use the ellipse to make this really simple and really easy. So just drag this in to change the shapes a little bit, right? We can change by selecting the outside edges a little bit if we want to make it more of an oval shape, right? Now all I have to do is take the transform, take that, bring that over here. You can see he's a little bit small for the square. Let's just make the square itself again a little smaller. Click on its transform right here under rectangle, right? Come back here, let's just change this to 0.50 instead and 0.50 again. And then we have a much tighter and better shape. You can see this kind of cut off our ellipse a little bit. So bring that down a little bit in the picture, bring it a little bit more to the right like this. Now all we have to do is change the color of that rectangle. Come in here and left click on rectangle right here. Click on style, hit white, and then select red right here. And now we have that red rectangle. To move the rectangle with the picture. Again, it's very simple. Highlight these nodes, these eight nodes, bring them out of the way. Take the transform here, left click and drag it over the line until it turns green or blue there. Left click and let go. And then just take the rock now, right? and just move him down into this position right here. We'll do the animation in a little bit, but just for now, we're gonna stick with this. To get everything a little more organized, left click and drag these eight nodes and just bring them above like this. Left click and drag up to here now, and then just move all of these out of the way so we have a little more space to work on our last one, right? All right, now for our last shape, we're gonna do a triangle. So it's gonna be a little bit different this time. So we wanna come up here to effects library again, come down here over here to shapes. And then we've gotta work with the triangle and how to get the triangle, right? We're gonna use this weird node. It's called the Essengon node. I don't know how to say that. So we're just gonna bring that down into the space. With it highlighted, just come up here to shape render, left click on that like we did before. Now get these two and just kind of move them out of the way a little bit. Take the S and gone, move it a little bit to the left, and with it highlighted, hit Shape Transform right here. Perfect. And then take the output of the S render here, put it into the merge, and we have our new shape. Now we wanna try to make a triangle, okay? So we come up here to the S and gone node, select that, come up here to sides, and let's come down to three sides, just like that. Now we need to change the rotation angle of this so it's more flat at the top and the little point at the bottom. So come over here to angle, double left click on this, type in 270 and hit return. 
There we go. Let's also make this smaller and change the color. So with the S and gone selected, come up here to style, left click on that, left click on the white there, left click on the blue, hit OK. Now we change the color to that blue, left click on the transform, come over here to the X size, double left click, hit 0 0.50, hit enter, and then 0 0.50 again. And then we've got that triangle. I'd say that's a little bit too small for my taste. We're gonna move it over though first. Just double left click on these again, hit 0.6 this time. We'll try that size and 0.6. And it's a little bit bigger, easier to fit a picture in, right? And we can always adjust that if we need to adjust that. So the next thing we wanna do again is add that drop shadow, right? So left click and drag these three nodes over, hit shift plus space bar, type in drop, hit enter, take the drop shadow, Hold the shift down and left click your mouse and just drag it to the line until it turns green blue, then let go. We've got our drop shadow nice and easy to see right here. Change the drop distance, just bring it in a little bit. You can do whatever you want. I just like a little bit less of a kind of blurry drop shadow on that particular thing. The next thing I'm gonna do is take the shape render, bring it up here, the shape transform, bring it over here. Take these three nodes, move them over, and then take the S and gone and just move it above. Now, right, we can work with our image because we've created a little bit of space there to work. Come up to the media pool, left click on that. We've got our last image, which is Scarlett Johansson right here. Take her output, bring it into the drop shadow. And now we have a picture of her up on the screen. We're doing the same thing we did before. Hit the transform right here. Now we can change the size of this by either left clicking and dragging this in, or we can use the size tool and button over here to make it bigger or smaller. Let's take her now with this transform selected, move her over the triangle, and let's come up to the media, right? And left click on the ellipse mask again. And now we've got a mask over her face. We can make this bigger by left clicking and dragging on the ellipse itself. Instead of that, right, we could also just take the height and width controls over here and use those. I'm just gonna do that, bring it above and make it maybe a little bit bigger to take more of her face into the picture, right? Now, I'm not 100% happy with the size of the triangle. I'm gonna change that in a second, but let's just take the transform here first though, select that for her, and then just bring her a little bit more into the triangle space like this. Let's come back to the transform of the S and gone, which is our triangle right here. Select that, type in 0 0.70 again, return and 0 0.70 return. And we have a triangle that fits our picture a little bit better, right? I like that a little bit better than I liked it before. Now all I have to do is create a transform to maneuver this. Take these eight nodes, highlight them, left click and drag them to your left. Take a transform from here, hold it right over the line until it let go. And when you let go, now that transform gives you the ability to move her around on the screen. So we have all these nodes up here, right? It looks like a lot, but it's really not that many. Now all we have to do is make a background for this and then maneuver that a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here, left click a background, drag that in, take its output, bring it into the other background right here, which is transparent. Now we have a black background. Let's change that to white real quick. Left click on the black left click on white, and there is our white background. All we have to do now is animate each one of these, okay? Very simple. We come over here to Simon's transform right here, right? And we can see that one moves him around the screen. He'll be the first one that we bring in. So let's just say by frame 18 right here, we come up to his position and left click the keyframe, come back to frame zero, and then just take him and left click and drag him off the screen like this. Now all I have to do is come up to the settings right here, left click on the motion blur, left click on spline, left click the transform here, left click the fit the zoom, left click and drag over the keyframes, S to smooth, hold down option on a Mac or alt on windows, take this handle and left click and drag it out to here. That's gonna smooth the animation. Just hit space bar to play and there we go. I've got motion blur turned off right now just to keep my playback smoother. And then the next thing we're gonna do is animate the triangle, right? The Scarlett Johansson one. So that was the last one that we actually made. So that was right here. And we're gonna have her animate on by frame, let's just say 36. Left click her keyframe right here, come back to 18. Bring her up with the Y position, just slide that up, left click and drag that up. Come to settings, hit motion blur, okay? Hit spline, left click right here, left click and drag. Zoom to fit, S to smooth, 
hold down option and drag this keyframe handle right here. And then we've got Simon and Scarlet zooming in. Last one is gonna be The Rock, right? And The Rock was over here with his transform right here. We've got him labeled Rock right there. So we've got the transform for him. I want him to come in by 54. So just left click on the keyframe right here. We've already got it on 54. Bring that back to 36. So just drag down a little bit. Take his Y position of the transform, bring it down like this, nice and easy. Come to settings, select motion blur, left click on spline, left click here, zoom to fit, left click and drag over the keyframes, S to smooth, hold down option and left click on your mouse to drag this keyframe out. And there we go. I'm just gonna come over here and select 50% so we can see this really easily. Hit spacebar, Simon, Scarlet, The Rock. Very simple. Now you might ask yourself, well, Jason, how do I move all these objects together now? I have all this on the screen. How do I move everything together off the screen after this? Really, really simple. All you have to do is come down here, take this transform and bring it either below these or you could bring it over here. I'm gonna bring it below just to move them all together. This will actually, this transform will control everything as far as movement after those initial moves happen on the screen like this, right? So we have Simon, Scarlet, The Rock. Now I wanna take them all off the screen real quick or I wanna change it up. Come down to, let's just say frame 102 with transform selected, hit the keyframe, bring it to the last keyframe right there. And then just left click and drag them all off the screen like this, hit settings, motion blur, spline, zoom to fit, left click and drag, S to smooth, option and drag this handle and it's gonna take them all off the screen together, okay? And again, if you have some different animations going on, if you want the entire thing to move off together besides the pictures, like also the background, you could change it for that. So let's just say I wanted to do that instead. Take this transform, just disconnect these lines, take the merge, bring it back into this merge, take this transform, left click and hit shift and bring that right here. And now it'll actually move everything off together, the entire slide, okay? So we had a white slide. We have all three pictures come in. And with the transform changing its position, it now will take the whole slide plus the pictures off the screen. Let's go back to the edit tab and watch it in real time. And let's hit space bar to play this. And that's what we get for our playback. Very simple, very easy, right? All right, so that wraps it up for this video on how to take your pictures, place them inside of shapes, and then maneuver them around your fusion compositions. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason for Vasa Productions. We'll see you next time.